what we did do is we got a chance to look through what everything does and get a feel for it, roll it around in our mouth a little bit, get a sense of the mouth feel of the cavalry archer. Um, now what I want to start doing is I want to start... Well, first I want to use a restroom, but the next thing I want to do is I want to start with a, with a simple, complete plan. Now, I talked about this before. Um, I'm going to talk about it again with the help of MS Paint, one of our favorite tools to use here on the channel. Um, the, the, the thing is that when, when most people think about a strategy game, let's see here. Here is the, um, here's time going this way, and here's possibilities, here's possible futures, right, Go, going this way. What a lot of people tend to think of strategy games as doing is they, like, just branch off in infinitely many directions like this, right? You, you, you can just get this huge, you know, basic spread like this of stuff. Um, but I find that the way that strategy games... I wrote possible? Possi... Let me change it to P. Um... What I find instead is that strategy games actually tend to have these like core convergence points that you hit on. And sometimes you can have some different convergence points, but basically games tend to pinch back through these. And then maybe they go through here and fork off, or maybe you can do like this and branch off this way. But like, you know, you wind up with like a lot of different things that wind up returning back to these core points like this. And so, whenever I'm trying to come up with a plan in, in some kind of strategy game, I try to think about what are these convergence points. What just happened? Get out of here. I'll redraw the whole graph. I try to think about w what these convergence points are. So, for instance, if I am talking about Terran versus Zerg in StarCraft One. No matter what you do at the start of the game, you will eventually hit a point where you have like four or five barracks, a factory making tanks, and a starport making science vessel. You'll also have an engineering bay getting plus one attack. Now, what you could do is you could start off and go two barracks early aggression. And then after that, you might win, but if you you know haven't won yet, you just pull back, you take an expansion, build a third barracks, build a factory, build a starport, build the fourth bears, and then you're back. There's sort of a strong early opening that Terran does where they go three barracks with a plus one engineering bay for a lot of early pressure. Not, not like a rush, but like continuous early pressure doing stuff like that. And then they will expand and build a factory or build a starport. Some people like to start off going one, one, one. They build a barracks, a factory, a starport. They do a little harassment with vultures and harassment with wraiths. And then they expand and get four more barracks, get an engineering bay, I guess get the engineering bay first, then get all the barracks. So what I like to try to think about is what my convergence points are going to look like in this game. So like, there is literal, and I want I want to um, separate between like the game's hierarchical blocks. Like, yeah, I need to get feudal age, I need to get castle age, I need to get these sorts of things. But there's the more valuable conceptual ones where let's let's say here is feudal age, here's castle age, here's imperial age, which we're totally going to get to today because we know what we're doing. Which is like, okay, in, at, at some point here, maybe there's some number of farms that I want to have. Let me use X here. There's some number of farms I'm going to want to get to after I hit my feudal age. There's some number of farms I'm going to want to get to when I get to castle age. There's things like this. There's going to be some count of workers that are going to be on gold at these various times. There's going to be when I add on which building. And by the way, I, when I say... When people say build orders, they get a little too obsessed with, oh, okay, so you're going to go worker, worker, farm, worker, farm, mill, worker, worker, farm, lumber. They get so obsessed with the sequence of commands that they don't think about where they're going. And where you're going is the important one. Because if you ever get lost or confused or thrown off of a sequence of lists, it's really hard to get back into the sequence. The sequence is the optimization. But what's underlying that is is these these sort of core things. It's it's like you I want to end up here. So if I kind of get a little lost, it's okay. I can wind my way back. And this is what helps with things like crisis management or getting rushed or things like this. 
Because Iceman says, do you want general timings, very precise timings? I don't really want timings at all. I don't want anything that's related to the clock. Instead, what I want is just very generic. Oh, at this stage, you generally want this. And as we optimize, the optimization is where the timings begin to show up. Um, so what I'm going to be looking for here, as I'm going through these replays, this is my, this is my sweet planning document, is, is I know that this game has like a build order thing that it will help show me how to get to Feudal Age. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just watch this game of Hera and a few other ones of Hera and just kind of watch the start of the game and look for some patterns. Look for some patterns that I can use as maybe five core tenets to abide by. Not because these core tenets will always lead to wins, but instead, so it, instead I want like five core things to be focused on because Where'd my MS Paint go? Did I close MS Paint? <gasps> Shit. Well, because if I know what to do early, middle, late, and super late, weak little plans, if I have clarity as to what I'm doing the whole time, I have a plan that will, this is important, help me learn. I'm not looking for the amazing plan that will always help me win. I'm looking for some rules of thumb to start with so I can focus on the execution in the game. And by having a, a backbone to my planning, I can adjust that over time. If you go into a game with no plan, you're just scrambling and reacting. If you go into a game with any plan, even if it's a terrible losing plan, you have a thing that you can adjust. So this is, I mean, I'm kind of being a little tongue in cheek with my late planning document, but this is exactly how I played StarCraft for any strategy game that I've ever gotten into. You always see the sort of core little uh, convergence points. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to mute. I'm going to use restroom, and I'll be back in like 90 seconds. It is I, day nine. So let's... So let's, let's first... Let's first... Okay, so we finished part one, a review of the tech tree, a review of some of the core upgrades and things like this. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be looking at uh, this game of Hera, and honestly, in the Dark Age... I know that the build from Dark Age of Feudal Age is pretty known. I just want to watch it. And is this restart playback from the beginning? Okay, so you, you can either completely restart the entire game. Okay, so I know people do this like elite goat scouting shit. But, you know, it, it's kind of funny. The first time I played Age of Empires 2, I didn't even realize that the number underneath the resource was the number of workers doing that resource. I never, never even thought about this. Is F3 pause? Can't believe it's not spacebar. So, okay. And what's the fast playback speed? Somehow I didn't realize that so much of the focus was on food at first. Alright, so the seventh one goes and woods it up. Mm. That's new for the definitive edition. Oh, is that so nice? Alright. Yeah, TX Maverick says, yes, please get everyone interested in AOE 2 right before the awesome tournament. Yeah, the Queen's Clash is this weekend. Hidden Cup 4 is next weekend. All right, so let's see this. And if, if I get good enough to manage the scout at the same time, that's fine. I'm not going to pressure myself. Holy shit. Garrison, a relic inside a monastery to generate half a gold a second? Oh, that's... That's some bullshit right there. That's good. Okay. Some of these are early numbers. I just super messed up. So there's five workers there doing stuff. Shoot and pull. Alright, so right now, that relic shouldn't be there. It's a map bug. Alright, cool. Okay, so I mean, like... Mentally, what I'm doing is it's like build two farms, get six on um, food, and then send the next four to wood. 
Alright, that's pretty straightforward. Alright, and I'll put these in my little note documents soon. Oh, this is a house. Ah, okay. I like this little organization of moving things out of the way. Right. To be honest, this build is super advanced for a beginner. I mean... I mean, sure. Is there actually five mining wood? Is this... What is this thing behind here? Because I just see the four. Where'd this fifth wood miner come from? Oh, this is a water map? Oh, I'm fucked. Oh, we're going to a dock? Oh, get me out of this game! Alright, I'm quitting this. Alright, return to replace. Don't give a damn. What is this? What is the name of this map? Ata okay, do we want Atacama, Arabia? Yeah, maybe Arabia. Oh, yeah, look at that. Coastal. Coastal. Why are we so afraid of water? I don't want... I don't want no water nonsense at all, man. Arabia, Arabia safe. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. All right, so... Two of these. Plus doesn't do nothing... Okay. Nice trick. Thanks, Shiba KMTG. It's the most powerful part about this. I'm gonna get islands my first game. Probably should have looked at water units. Probably should have looked at water units. Yeah, same old, same old. Six right on that. March off, build some wood. QR. But um. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking for a lot of this, like, early build order stuff first. Because here's... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, here here is how I understand Age of Empires 2 by applying my understanding of general RTS stuff. So I generally like to start somewhere at the end or the middle of the game and work backwards from there. So my understanding of the game is, let's go to all visibility, is that you start somewhere. Let's just kill the fog. You start somewhere. Your opponent starts somewhere else. And then if we look at the mini-map, there's like some good resources. Gold, stone in the middle. Gold, stone in the middle. And let's see, there's another gold over here. I actually find it really hard to see on this, on this particular map. And so it's the main goal of the game as I understand it, and I know this is an oversimplification. If I'm thinking at sort of the mid, uh, the, the middle of the game backwards, I'm going, okay, how do I secure these golds? And my understanding of the sort of mid game in AoE 2 is it's plomping down castles to control big areas of land. <laughs> as the sort of, uh, the anchor points for us to fight over this stuff. And this is then where siege weapons start coming in. My understanding is that only trebuchets outrange castles. Is that right? Am I am I correct in that? I, I I might be wrong. I think that's right. And bombard cannons. Yeah, but that that's not a unit that exists for us, comma day nine. So um. So my understanding is that you use castles as sort of these, like, anchor points. Now there's harassment around. There's people poking and prodding at each other's defenses and shit like that. Um, but really, it's trying to eat up space and control this stuff. If I want to do early pressure, I get a siege workshop and smash earlier on. Actually, let me, let me, let me stop. Mid-game plomping castles down to control space to let me get the resources, right? And I think of this as like an anchoring thought. So in my mind, early game is going to be stuff. I'm going to do some stuff. Mid game, plot castles to control center goal, right? It's like really basic. End game, do some stuff. Let me go ahead and control S and save this document so I can research later. 
Uh, let's not let's not call it plop. Let's plomp it because that's kind of what the noise is. So if in the early game, I think of the like early, mid, and end not as times, but as like conceptual moments in time. So for instance, if like no one messed with anyone early game, this mid game might happen at some time, like 10 minutes. By, by the way, I don't know if these are accurate to the actual game. These are just throwaway times. But if maybe there was a lot of aggression and harassment and I was fighting to stay alive, this might happen at the 15 minute mark, but that's okay. That's that's okay. This this gets shifted around. Eventually, my understanding is I want to plomp castles down and control the center gold, right? Stuff like this. And so when I see things like early pressure from siege workshops, like if I'm building a siege workshop and then I'm building a mangonel to try to break through and harm the enemy and shit like this, that might win me the game. It might just deal damage. If it doesn't win me the game, I know that this is going to be my next goal. You know what I'm saying? Um, so so I... I my understanding of the game is plomp castles down to control the center, and there's going to be some stuff. There's going to be some siege workshop poking, prodding bullshit that's going on. Um, but, like, the stuff that I'm not going to try to do is I'm not going to, one, try to learn rush builds to win immediately. Two, not try to um, figure out any all-in. A rush is something you're trying to do as fast as possible, and all-in is at some point you give up with next steps and you're trying to win right now. Um, I... I I, I'm not going to do any of that. Another thing that I'm not going to do is focus excessively on precision. I'm going to look at really broad strokes things. So, um, like, one of the things that I'm going to be looking at uh, eventually is, hey, how many farms and at what time? Or, when do I have how many farms? When do I have how many things on gold? And I, I know the answer is probably more nuanced than that. I know the answer is probably something like, well, you generally want three on gold, but if they're doing this sort of early pressure, you can actually sneak a fourth one on gold, because then at this time you can build two of this instead of one. Don't care about any of that. Don't care about any of that. These are all optimizations. So what I'm seeing is I base... I'm, I'm going to stick with something like four on wood... I go six on food, four on wood, and then I just keep stacking things on food to just slay goat after goat after goat. I'm gonna build a house somewhere in here. Placing these houses far away seems good. I made this mistake in my first few games of Age of Empires where I would like build the house like right here then I wasn't able to plant farms. So that's good. Just I should remind myself to space some stuff out. Now this is something that I messed up a bit. Let me zoom in like this and see how many workers are here. Let me go over here and go double click. Is this... I find it like really hard to parse this visually sometimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, so it looks like eight or so on this. And then I remember I overvalued foragers here. There's still just three mining wood, but I'm gonna have four. Question, is, does this form a hole or is this cheese? Is this the Swiss cheese wall? Point to point, like this. It's tight, it's a tight wall, perfect. Perfect, so like when I was sleeping, my little booty was sticking out, my dog, she lied down, she plopped down, she put her booty against my booty, and so like right between there, airtight. Nothing could get through. It was a perfect wall, similar to these houses. Is that is that accurate, is this good? Because uh, for any of you that didn't know, in StarCraft Brood War, um, a building had a different amount of pixels of space that it took up on each side. So for instance, if you have like a gateway and a forge this way, nothing can get through. But if you have a gateway and a forge flipped like this, both of them have more pixels on this internal edge. So you can slit zerglings and workers through. And each unit has a different um, shape to um, 
to its own width. So, like, there's certain things that are not, that are, like, Dragoons can get through, but Ultralis can't, you know, things like this. There's also funny things where uh, a Vespine Geyser in... A Vespine Geyser, like, the raw resources, is larger than a assimilator that you build on top of it to collect resources. So there were, like, weird things where you would, like, have a Vespine Geyser, and you'd make an, a building above and below it, and it was a tight wall. Nothing could get through. And then later on, you would build an assimilator, and then that had a smaller footprint so your units could slip around it. It's completely fucked up. Best game ever. Um... Alright, so I mean, it's like we're doing pretty normal, basic stuff. Yeah, just building houses. Oh yeah, that's right. Workers just wail on things. Oh my god! So I would like T-click, G-click, and then B-slick. Only four, huh? So, so we just we just get our goats. We get our goats. We kill a boar. We get our goats. We go for more. Yeah, I mean, look at how much freaking food there is, man. This is ridiculous. Loom. Oh my. God. No. Jesus Christ. This is this. This is incredible. Okay, so look at how much food is being researched, and of course, loom is being researched. Everyone loved that. So for some reason in my head, I thought that you had a limit of how many dudes could chop away at animals. I thought six was the limit, and it looks like you just kill two animals at the same time. All right, so loom and feudal age. Nice. All right, so I'll, I'll probably have an animal animal harvesting plant here and an animal harvesting thing here. Okay, so now we're going to feudal age. And then so I would I would anticipate that we're probably going to build What's the difference between a shepherd and a lumberjack? Oh, I assume it's the task that they're doing. I was like, "What?" So, okay. Something has changed with this with the amount of dudes getting lumber. Now everyone's chopping lumber. What? I'm... Still just four over here, four in the berries. Quite contraries. Oh, and then there's this bullshit where people just build gates. Look, let me tell you something. I know, I have watched streams of Age of Empires and seen players just suddenly go into Fortnite mode and become a structure. I have seen this shit happen. I will never do that. I would rather my villagers die then try to learn this skill set when I'm this inexperienced. I don't care. I'm going to not research Loom, let them die, and build no walls. I'm not going to do it. So, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but part of me feels like something... Is it correct that right when you research to feudal age, you bail on getting this much food and go hardcore into wood? Is that right? Is that right? I assume that these are being chopped down because uh, we require more farms. Are farms a feudal age thing? I didn't even know that. Are farms in feudal age? Remember that? Depends on the build. All right, cool. I'm gonna see what concepts I can extract out of this. Horse collar, immediately. Holy shit, axe smacking, instantly. Oh my god, look at all these fucking farms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at how fast this guy gets this shit. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Alright. 
What's your favorite country to play on Age of Empires? Phoebus, I don't know any of them. Let me be clear. And as far as I'm concerned, Age of Empires has... It... Dude, factions in Age of Empires are like flavors of LaCroix sparkling water. Okay, I don't... I buy the water because it's like bubbly, you know, mm, that tastes good. Lime, lemons, same shit, okay? Like, in this game, you have villagers, you have ages, you make farms, you chop wood. Yeah, this one's 30% more of that, and this one's elephants can read, and I, I, I don't care. Like, I just want to get the basics down of what, like, things are happening with this, and I'll probably choose whoever has fast, strong knights, okay? Like, they're all, they're all the same. They're all bubbly water. All right, but I, I, would, I would probably choose the one that, uh... I had elephants that could read. Literate elephants sound like totally awesome. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five. Man at arms! Okay, so. There's a couple things that I'm gonna ask. So here's where we're getting into some broad strokes, right? I, look, I looked at Dark Age, and here, here appears to be my Dark Age build. Dark Age. Castle Age. What? Feudal Age. Uh, and then... Castle... So, like, Dark Age, my, my understanding is that it's going to be, uh, let's see here. Six workers to food, four to wood, all to food, mill after third house, four to mill, food, 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 loom, castle, or uh, tech at 22 to 23. Something like this. This is, this is my understanding. This is my understanding of the age. Um, now, now, okay, so, so, you know what this is? This, this does look a lot like a sequence, okay? This looks a lot like a sequence. As we go into Feudal Age, I want to just get a sense of real broad stroke stuff. Because, like... No! I want to get a sense of some broad strokes things. Like, obviously, Horse Collar uh, plus Faster Choppers. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I see these sorts of things right away, but now, now in terms of general, general, like, goals of the feudal age, is there, like, are there normal farm counts that you're interested in? Are there normal, like, just in terms of resources, like, timings or th things to think about when to get, like, um... This shit. Gold. 10 to 12 farms. Okay, so... So really, our hero, Hera, here, just threw down a bunch of farms because Hera could. Six farms per town center to maintain villager production. That's right. I remembered that. That's right. Let's We're at layer 2 strategy. <laughs> We're at layer 0 .02 of strategy, man. We're, we're a strategy game in early access right now. That's what we are. Our strategy is, like, way okay. far away. I gotta remember this, like, villager swarm. Now, th there, here, here's some things that I'm not interested in. I don't care right now about techniques to defend a man-at-arms rush. I don't care right now about any of that stuff. I'm just looking for broad strokes. That's obviously very important. Obviously, I'm going to want to figure out how to defend that stuff. I just want to be thoughtful for what's going into my brain. Learn a limited amount at a time. Huh. So it's sort of like as... As we're getting all of our stuff established. Like 12, 12 farms-ish right away. And then go straight for mining. And I remember, I, I remember this number being significant. Three on gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause how much does how much does going to castle cost? Is this is this a thing? Does it does it tell me where the things are? 
<laughs> is there no cost? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Millie AoE. Oh, Millie of Gamer Legion fame. Millie AoE. The pro. Holy shit. Thank you warmly for the rate of 908 as we, comma, a total fucking newbie, comma, are learning the basics of this game. There it is, Castle Age. 800 food, 200 gold. And this is... There's 500 food. Alright, great. A warm welcome to all of you. For any of you who are watching Nilly stream, my name's Day9. I uh, played a lot of StarCraft in my life. Big StarCraft player. Play a lot of Magic the Gathering right now as well. Um, I just got interested in trying to learn some Age of Empires 2 multiplayer. So what I'm doing right now is we're going through some replays to understand some basics for a plan. Not super precise build orders, just real basics of like, about how many farms do we get? What are some good units to make and think about? I think this is the thing that I would mess up on a lot is forgetting this barracks. Alright, so... I want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, and then there's a few still mining over here, but like... It looks like going to 10 choppers is... Is a standard? Is this good? It looks like only one is constructing. Buildings appear to build pretty damn fast. Damn. Some real beating going down. Now nah, I want this. Huh. Hmm. So, let's talk. So, obviously there's some pressure going on. But there, there are... So, let's think about this. I, I'm just going to say three is like a normal number of gold. And if I want to make some archers, or do some shit with my archery range, I guess I want more gold, and that's it. That's the entire logic. Okay, you know, let me let me let me ask this question. This is a question I have long known uh, that I don't have an answer to. The relationship between choppers and food food grabbers, I don't understand. So, for instance, someone saying, "Hey, a feudal age, you want to have like ten to twelve farms." Like here we have we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Now, is that normal? Or is this just due to the pressure or something like this? How many wood choppers do we get? And where do I normally do that? Like, that's, that's the sort of thing that I'm really, really unsure about. So, so let's, let, let me just, let's just kind of make a statement. Um... Is, is, is this true? Is it like 10 to 12 farms? Like, actually, let's just start with farm count. What's a normal farm count to go for? And by the way, I know there's a billion exceptions to this. I know there's a billion, billion, billion exceptions, and there's tons of build orders, but, like, uh, what I'd like to do is think of extremes. Is three farms too many in Feudal Age? And someone's like, Jesus, no, 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 like, at least 10. And I'm like, okay. Um, do players ever get more than... More than 20? 10, 10, 10, 10 to 16? 16 something, something, something? Farmos? And then for like... When I'm here, I heard someone say like 30-ish farms and someone here say something like 50-ish farms. Something like this. Is this... Yeah, I mean like... Are, are these numbers that I've just thrown out? Are these, are these stupid numbers? This is just a thing that I believe that from watching a lot, I just went, that seems about right. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, let's just stick with these numbers. Because again, 
These numbers is what we're going to say is the start of our plan. And the start of our plan is not about winning. It's about something that's within the realm of reasonable. And then I'll start losing and we'll start adjusting these numbers. Um, and also, uh, is, is there some sort of ratio? Like one to one fooders to wooders, is that right? What's the ratio of farmers to choppers, of fooders to wooders, of Buzz Light years to woodies? What is it? So that's this person I think about the gather rate each villager has, because for example, you would not want 16 farms when producing this particular type of unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, let me just say, I'm sure that analysis is totally intelligent and reasonable. I'm just trying to get like a basic basic it's like a real basic thing nearly always says, want me to share a link uh to how to distribute um if there's just like a, a rule of thumb that might even be only 40 percent correct 1.2 to 1 so uh so if we had something like 10 choppers and then had something like 25 choppers and then had something like 40 choppers are these again ballpark is this fair sort of stuff to go for Or have I have I have I got this way off? Does it look okayish with some obvious tweaking? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like, I know that there's like a ratio. Uh, Nilly says reasonable, but also think about gold. I'm just doing one thing at a time right now. I was gonna make this statement, then I was gonna go back and watch the replay and just look at gold a little bit. Just look at gold. Because again, I, I don't want to get everything into my head. I just kind of want some numbers. So, for instance, let's say I'm playing a game. I have a shitload. A villager's idol, and I'm like, what do I want to do? And if I'm in Castle Age, and I look up and I have 10 farms, I go, oh, I should get more farms because I had this number floating around in my head. Not a plan that will provide the correct solution in every situation. Not the plan that is right for every composition. Just a plan that is enough to let us get started and start losing so we can understand. 40 choppers is way too many. Okay, that's that's... I'll keep that one in mind. And then skirmishers are being built because there's some man at arms. And we want to have range that helps pick this stuff off, as well as range that helps us pick off archers that should show up. We goes real player first immediately? Absolutely, Candor Bombers. I'm I don't I don't do this shit half speed. Are you kidding me? Do you know who I am? Do you know that every single multiplayer game that I've never played the first time I queue up is ranked? Are you kidding me? I want to get this recorded, man. I'm a pain piggy. Let's drop this MMR. Oh is about says, gotcha, you're looking for as vague as possible while being as accurate as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here's the thing: my brain zappa bad is a very oddly preloaded brain for this game. Like, I was top, 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 top fucking tier Brood War. I don't remember the names of units in this game. <laughs> if you say, get horse collar, I am going to try to find a structure that begins with a horse. Right? Like, I am real. I don't even know any of the hotkeys for the units. I half remember the hotkeys for the building. Right? Because I have this, like... Huge experience set that could be valuable here. Missing utterly basic information that players who have only, you know, intermittently played Age of Empires have fully internalized. Uh, and so, and so, I know that um, from my from my Brood War background, what I want is a couple of guiding principles as I'm playing. So, if I were playing Zerg against Protoss in Brood War, number one goal at the start of the game. Five hatches and aspire and zergling speed. Those are the three. Doesn't matter what your opening is. You eventually want five hatches, zergling speed, and aspire. Great. What's your next goal? Second gas guys are hydras. All hydra upgrades and hydra plus one attack, and a sixth hatchery. That's your next goal, right? And and so you know if I'm if I'm going early aggression from one one base aggression, then I go hatch hatch layer hatch hatch. Or I could go hatch pool, hatch, that's an early econ build, and then get zergling speed and layer and, and hatch hatch, stuff like this. So like I like to have these convergence points in mind. So for instance, this, th this, this number, these are convergence points for me. Wherever I am, I can converge towards this, and I will be thick, solid, and tight. All right, cool. 
And we're and, and <laughs> This is also a really important thing to note, Sam, about. This is really important to note. Um, oh, shit. How do I put this, man? I'll be honest. I had something really important I wanted to say, and it just ran. It just left my mind. Oh, shit. It just left my mind. Oh, no. I started to think about something else, and it went away. Uh I don't remember, so I'll say something different. My plan here, the important thing to me about this plan is that at any stage in the game, I know what I am going for. Doesn't mean it's good. Ah, I remember what I was gonna say. I remember. Here's the really, really, really important thing. When I am in the game, I focus on execution, period. When I'm out of the game, I focus on my plan. When I'm in the game, I focus on execution, period. When I'm out of the game, I focus on the plan. Now, I've watched a lot of Age of Empires 2 in the last year, so I, I, I actually have enough muscle memory. I should have muscle memory. What's, what's the word? Like observer memory of <laughs> concepts and army shapes and tactics that I, I am not yet overwhelmed. And my plan could be really bad, but I want to make sure that when I'm in this game, I can focus on execution. So I assume right now that what's happening is that Hera is focusing on trying to pick off the man at arms. And eventually needs to pull some of these bad boys back. Researching to castle age once comfort has been built. And what's this? This is a, a blacksmith. Why a market? Maybe because they're cheap? Cheap and large? Maybe because Hera knows the size? That's what I that's what I assume. That's what I assume. Oh, this shit? Wow, let me tell you something we are not gonna do at all. You need two news for the next age, yeah. No, you, need, you need two buildings of that age for the next age. So one thing I have not really tracked is what upgrades have been getting gotten. These are all skirmishers, huh? Skirmishers are defensive. Yeah, these did get cancelled, right? So I assume it was the size. And I assume that Hera is a gamer. So at some point here, it looked like... Three gold, give or take a bit. And then six stone, give or take a bit. I don't know. Okay. So, I mean, I'm thinking something. Let me actually put these on the same. Row. Three farms. Ten wood. Three gold. Something like this. Six stone. Hey, what, what what's a good food count to be going for Castellet? And, and feel free to give me a range, like, 40 to 70 is, like, super fine. I, I'm just trying to get a sense, again, of some ballpark numbers that I'm working with, because I see 22, 23, Dark Age to Feudal Age, as, like, yeah, this is, this is the thing. Um, but I'm unsure about going Feudal Age to Castle Age, the sort of numbers I should be working with. Depends on 25 to 60. Wow, really that fast? Like 30 is 30 is very fast. Okay. Well, so let's, let's just put some numbers, say 30 to 60, something like this is, is okay. Nice. And then look at this. Going straight for the choppers. No, nothing done at the mining camps yet. Okay. I'm, I'm going to stare up here a lot. Let's pull back. Wood seems to be a very important upgrade. Okay, so so let's make let's start making a statement and see if we're full of shit at all. So right now you can start building town centers. You can obviously work towards building a castle. You could go for a siege workshop or some shit like this. So those those seem like three branches for me. Okay. I think I, I would... I would probably want to just go for some kind of...
town center based thing or some unit based thing. I think just going for like a castle right away. That seems... My intuition could be completely wrong, but it, it, it seems like going for a castle like right away, like right as you hit castle age, seems very defensive. It seems like I don't yet have enough units to be able to even leverage a forward castle. Because the castle is the anchor point for controlling space, and the units are the sort of the things that pivot around that anchor. So if I have no units, then that would be unimaginably dumb, bad, garbage, and embarrassing for me to do. What's this, thing? What's this wheelbarrow? What is this wheelbarrow? Oh, shit. Okay. So horse collar is a mill thing, and wheelbarrow is kind of like the next tier of farmy shit. So I'm seeing wood getting done. Mangonel. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, this makes sense to me. If my opponent... Lumen Wheelbarrow Town Center? Yeah, yeah. Because Horse Collar is at the mill, and it feels like Wheelbarrow technically affect. Yeah, I guess Wheelbarrow does affect everything. Yeah, I don't know why my brain only attributed it to speed. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, got it. All right, so here is something I'm going to note, but I'm going to fucking ignore! Okay? I'm going to ignore this. I'm seeing that what Hera did is Hera built anti-archer units. And Hera, I don't, I don't know when Hera saw these archery ranges. Maybe I could scout them. Maybe it's just that I looked at the archer count and I know that there's double archery range, right? Either way, these skirmishers are going to have substantial value. Ah, oh, yes, I even had the blacksmith upgrade. Tight. So because I am building the unit that counters everything that pops out of here, going straight into a mangonel means that I already have the units to be able to defend the mangonel. So this this feels like it's leveraging the fact that I built these for defense as a stepping stone. So it's... In, in, my, in my head, I'm going, oh, okay, so what I'm seeing Hera do is Hera's helping us learn a little bit about just numbers of things for units. I'm still seeing six and three and then a bunch of shit. Wheelbarrow. Um, but yeah, I'm seeing the mangonel, but it feels like I would need to be super careful about... Goodbye. <laughs> Seems like I would need to be incredibly careful about viewing this as like a build order. Oh. Okay, so maybe this is actually a defensive maneuver. Because if, if I'm saying, oh yeah, building skirmishers against archers, that seems defensive. Building a castle, like literally 10 feet from your town center, that seems defensive. So I suppose then that this mangonel is a defensive... Okay, yeah, no, it's sitting still. It's, it's a defensive thing. What the fuck? Hera is here? Oh my god! I am a mix of excited and ashamed. Hera, holy shit. Dude, we have been honored here to have pros like Nilly and Hera. Great folks stopping by our, our stream. Um, fuck. Hera, I watch you like most mornings that you're streaming. Right now it's 4 p.m. for me. I wake up and I'm like, is Hera on? Oh, he is. And then I tune in and I write about it in my diary. <gasps> oh, Hera! Like, we're watching you right now. I deliberately downloaded your replays to review here to learn basic shit and advanced shit. And you tune in and I'm like, is a mangonella type of fruit? Oh, hi, Hera! Like, I am both self-conscious and excited. It's really good. It's good. It's, it's, it's a good sort of experience for me to have. <laughs> have good players here. Now, now, Hera, I'm going to make a lot of rhetorical questions, and you have far too much knowledge. Like, if I asked you, what was the reasoning for getting the second Mangonel? If you explained to me, it would be like the scene in H.P. Lovecraft's um, Mountains of Madness, where you would share the knowledge, and I would literally go insane because my tiny brain would not even be able to comprehend it. You explaining the strategy of this to me is the equivalent of me explaining the strategy in StarCraft to my cat, Sheriff. 
she looks at me with wide blank eyes and wants tummy time. And here, I'm not going to lie, if you were here and you were telling me things about AoE, I'll put my little hands up. You're so smart, Hera. Do you want to do tummy time? <laughs> All right, let's start learning how to kill people. All right, let's go back. Tummy time. Hera knows a StarCraft 2. Hera knows a StarCraft... Oh, oh, goodness. Oh, my. Oh. oh tummy time. All right, so... All right, when did this get built? Why is this here? Wait a minute, what, when did this? Harris says, bro, I played two games of StarCraft. <laughs> I watched both of them. <laughs> you know nothing? That's good, that's good. At least I can lord that over you. You only played two games of StarCraft? Pathetic. Um, why, why is the market here? I don't even understand this. This is, this is crazy to me. <laughs> if you're sick, you stop laughing, yeah. Oh, wait, I can't, I can't type in this? Oh, shit, you can't type in replays? Uh, a request to the developers. Okay, so I, I, I am perceiving a cataphract? Isn't that... Okay. I'm never gonna build this. This doesn't matter to me. So let's, let's think about some of the basics in our plan. We'll definitely want more farms, more choppers, and we'll start building some extra town centers. I'm still seeing three and six as some key numbers on these resources, and we're just really learning the dead basics. I don't I don't know what a cataphract is, but I do know what cataracts is. And I would not want to research that any day of the week. Is a cataphract oh it's just a it's just a nightman, right? Market buys and sells resource I'm I'm not building a market. Even if we're playing the game of Dominion, I don't buy that garbage. Cataphracts are like knights, but they take substantially less anti-cavalry damage and do bonus damage to infantry. Okay, so this is this is a knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, I feel like a really core concept is um, MBL is here too, damn. No, I know, I know. It's like I'm getting way more attention that is that than is fair. I don't deserve it. Um, I mean, like, we're going to load into the game and <laughs> y'all are going to be like, oh, fuck, he's bad. He's so bad. He's bad. Mmm. Oof. Hmm. Ugh. Now, in terms of my commentary, really good at the commentary. That is very excellent, right? This is so excellent. Uh, in terms of the gameplay, Jesus. Anyways. Okay, so, basic principle in RTS games, right? Um... Okay, by the way, here, here in my eyes, this, this, in my mind, is the fundamental sort of theorem, the fundamental ideas living at the heart of RTS is a few things. One, a lot beats a little every day of the week. Paper beats rock, but three rocks beat paper. And for this reason, getting more resources is really good, but you have to spread out in order to get them, right? So with gathering more resources comes the need to control more space, comes into vulnerability, but it's vulnerability that you're opting into. And so for this reason, I think that the, the, um, the sort of core that lives at the heart of how units behave, the core that lives at the hearts of how units behave is that there's strong immobile things, such as the siege tank in StarCraft II, or the castle in this game. And then there are mobile weak things, like a knight, or like a vulture, or like a mutilisk. Um, and so the more you're spreading out, your fast mobile things are very nice for being able to help you control this much space um, at the cost of being weak. But that's okay because you're getting enough resources by being able to control the space. Kel says his knights aren't weak. I mean, I would say if you compared its damage output to how much damage a mangonel does while factoring in the cost. Like this, or am I full of shit on this still? I feel like this would deal more damage per dollar. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, anyways. I mean, typically more mobile things are more weak or have specific weaknesses that are in there, but either way. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the, let me be real, real specific here. 
which is um, yeah, Iceman says switch out knight with scout, and your analogy is money. Let's actually take a look at the at the cost of this. I can't get the cost of it. Um, when I say weak, I'm talking about considering with respect to cost, its counters, and the cost of those counters, and things like this. Um, this is what I mean typically by mobility is weak. Like, for instance, a Mutalisk. In StarCraft, if you get a pack of Mutalisk, you can eliminate an entire worker field. You can do amazing shit like this. Yeah, let's actually take a look here. That's right. Thank you very much for reminding me of this. And let's go Let's go look. Where's the Eye Doctor here? Because I need to look up the Cataracts. Where's a castle? Where's a castle? Where's a castle? Castle, castle. Castle? 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 Where's the castle? Oh, God. It's at the right. Okay, here we go. There's a university. Castle. Cataphracts. 70 and 75. Bonus 9 versus infantry. So it's 70 and 75 gold. And how much how much is how much is our building smashing our manager? Manganel. Yeah, so like a cataphracts this is 70 and 75. Has 110. And then you compare it to, like, uh, where's a pikeman? Pikeman, the spear boy. It seems to be getting reduced as a result of this faction. I don't know why it costs so little. But, I mean, this this does a shitload, right? And the cost is super, super cheap. So, I mean, actually, I think that, like, a, a, a pikeman versus a knight is a good example of what I mean by, like, immobile strong, mobile weak. It's not that the mobile things are shitty. Like an Ultralisk is not a shitty unit. <laughs> but I'm just saying that like as a basic principle, this is what underlies this entire idea of like spreading yourself out to get resources. So it makes sense that as you're spreading yourself out, you're getting faster units. And I mean, I'm not li like, again, what I'm saying will certainly have, well, in this case and with this exception, with this thing and with that thing, you know, like I, it's. I'm just being in terms of a general idea, like ignoring even what RTS game we're playing. This is kind of like the thing, like ca <laughs> immobile castles. Very good, very good. Uh, and what happens is that players who have played a lot have uh, internalized that the complexity lives in where the exceptions and the caveats are. Um, but speaking in terms of general principles, Manganels can dish out area damage to shit. Woo! Look at you go here. Look at you micro. But I don't care about this at all. I want to see what's going on in your base. Yeah, because I mean, like, what's going to go on with the battling is not as important to me right now as what's just happening on the resource front. Because I'm seeing, like, not that many wood choppers. It looks like wood transitioned over to here. Oh, weird. So we're getting a lot more gold. forward. So cataphracts cost what? They were purple, weren't they? Weak versus archers? Why are you weak versus archers? I don't think these things are weak versus archers at all. Nine extra versus Condottieri. Uh, okay. Yeah, because these don't cost any wood. Salve. 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 So what's the ratio between these two for minimums? Isn't it like four to one? I need for every four farms I can support with one chopper. I mean, you're, you're fighting, you're doing stuff, and I know you're powerful in whatever, Hera. So this this seems to me like, like uh, a sort of fringe situation, where if I became very, very good, I would be able to identify, oh, in this situation, I'm building only the thing that requires no wood. But... 
It looks like we're rallying new villagers to wood. Dude, oh my god, in this game, I get so much fucking wood. Constantly, I get too much wood. I have like 70 guys chopping. 70 choppers. But I mean, like, like here's what's really valuable to me, is I am seeing many of you say, oh yeah, you're going to want a lot of wood in Castle Age in situation XYZ because of ABC. But what I'm seeing is 10. I didn't know 10 was a lot. That's really interesting. That's really fascinating to me. And these th there's numbers that are very qualitative and very built upon the knowledge of the game. Because you'll watch StarCraft players be like, holy shit, he has so much gas. And you look and it's like 800. <laughs> you know, it's like, is 800 a lot? It's like, at this stage of the game, it's a ton. And then players get max and it's like, a uh, player has 6,000, 2,000. Yeah, he doesn't have that much gas backed up. I'm kind of worried about that. He'll definitely lose if they remax. Right. Trying to look at just what's happening up here. Look at that. Shh. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, okay. So this is where there's forward castles to control space. And, and this is something that I think that I, I, I am probably going to try to lean on castles more on my side of the map. Like, if the midline of the map is the equator, I, I, I'm going to build castles at the Tropic of Capricorn, for sure. Because at this point... I don't know if I'm necessarily good enough to be like, Oh, there's a hill! I'm gonna build it here and take out your wood! I'm a gamer! I'm not a gamer yet. I'm just some fucking guy. So this, this is this is actually pretty interesting. What are these? These are... These are Neefs? So what we, what we might say is that there's a conceptual wall that's being built like this, right? Arrows, 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 and then it's being extended out this way, and there's nothing really here. So this is technically a vulnerability that villain can exploit, but we have, we have cataracts, so it's no problem. I like bases and I like fast things. I don't know what, what faction this is that, that Hera's playing. Maybe it's Byzantine, because it says it right fucking there. It could be Byzantine, but maybe it isn't. No one ever knows for sure. How will you choose your first civilization? I'm going to go with whatever, whatever has solid, fast units. I like fast units. Fast units just make sense to me. I know what I'm doing with them. Slow units, I feel like, um, require game knowledge that I, that I lack. Like, for instance, if I am building a slow unit... The skill would be choosing the correct situation to put it in. Because if I'm the slow unit, I can't retreat. So I need to be very good about battle selection. If I am the fast units, if I'm wrong, I just get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Franks are the obvious choice. They're the most straightforward for knights. Uh, yeah, Frank is also a very funny name. So I'll, I'll definitely choose that. What is this? What does this button do? Oh, this is the town center selection button. So let's let's just take a look at how this is evolving out. Let's let's speed this up. So it looks like these mangonels were used just largely for defense. Still kind of staring up here, and it looks like just worker, worker, worker. Oh, look at this. Okay, so it's kind of like... It feels like Castle Age was broken into two parts. There's Castle Age Part 1, which is... Build a castle. And do some stuff. And then Part 2 was sort of taking these and beginning to increase the farm count substantially. Because I presume that what's coming up next is... And, and securing resources, right? I get to Castle Age and I use that to secure resources. So that's like... Phase one, like phase two, is building out a bunch of shit, and it's just uh, lots of cataphracts. So, so that, th though there were no walls built, like I feel like the the wall here is over here and over here. I've never really seen this number go above twenty. I didn't think I've seen it go above fifteen. Okay, 
Now, a bunch of houses were built, but it seems like at, at some point you just gack out a bunch of houses and it's fine. La la la! Wow, I'm seeing this number six. Is like a, is like, it seems to be some sort of standard number. Oh, I see two castles for double cataphracts. I might not get two castles to smash out units. And I assume that if I were building something like knights, I would just have like two stables or something like this. Um, so I assume that maybe if I did something like six on stone, kind of before the castle age kicks off, um, and then probably just like. Some small amount of stables pounding out shit. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna... So, like... Part one is going to be like, uh, build a defensive castle, secure extra mo money with ta town centers. And then I'll also add on to this add on uh, whatever small set of production structures you need. And then part two looks like um, ramp up farms to a bunch of farms. Simple plan for a simple man. That's the name of the document. I can see I can see that there's just there's just not that many there's not that many woodies. It's getting built here. It, it feels like it's just villagers. There's bingo. Oh, there soon will be bingo. Uh-oh. What's a creep post? What's a creep post? Are we building anything in response to this? Here's what's weird to me. Why, why is Hera building nothing? Oh my god. It's a unique building. It's a small castle. It sure looks like it. I wonder what, what the holdup was on constructing additional things. This is hand cart. What's a hand cart? Oh, I assume this is like even faster worker movement. So Hera has done largely nothing but buy cataphracts. Doing some walling with farms. Okay, it seems, seems reasonable. What is this? This is heavy plow. Okay. All right. What's this? Iron casting, so I think this is some sort of... What's this do? Heavy plows, horse collar too? Got it. And I assume that a conic is something that I should know. There's mini castles all over the fucking place. You see, see, th this is the kind of thing that I, I think that my lack of knowledge would make me feel way ridiculously uncomfortable here. Right, like losing a town center, oh my god. Okay, so you just... Defensive castle is a wall? Oh my god. Holy... I'm never gonna be this good. I'm never gonna be that good. That This is hilarious. This is fucking hysterical. Elite cataphract? This is, this is incredible. So, what I'm seeing right now is that Hera has largely just focused on a single unit, really, and then did a bunch of economy. It's not like there were seven different collections of compositions of things and trading and all this. It was just like... Oh, 
Look at this little, look at this poor turtle getting out of there. Okay, this is the plate barding armor. Okay, so it's just like upgrades. Two plus two. Wow, plus three plus four. Holy shit. Oh, I've seen this where you just smash outposts in order to get control of things. And then trebuchets to begin this. Okay, so. Ca Castle Age. Castle Age seems to last a long time. I don't need to rush to Imperial Age. Like, it looks like Dark Age, you get the hell out of fast. Feudal is a little bit swifter, but then there's a there's a long, meaty phase of the game. A lot beats a little every day of the week. Goodbye, NTG. I mean, that looks like game, doesn't it? Oh my god, trebuchets out of every single castle? Damn. I have such a better grip on what's even going on in this game. When I played last time, I picked the game up cold. Fucking cold. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! There's so much less stuff on this map. Oh my gosh. Alright, so let's... Let's load a game. Yeah, let's load a game. Let's go to replays. So we watched... Versus Nectary. What's Atacama? Both on Arabia? Alright, let's let's load this one. Okay. Alright, so let's see if we can see patterns in this one. Uh, this is another Hera game. Because we are we are a Hera Stan account. So I'm gonna probably see. Six food, going into four wood, going into everybody on food now. Into loom. Oh yeah, four on the mill. Food, 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 loom tech. Okay, yeah. Gotta remember the loom. Okay. Frank Sinatra says Sean Hare fans are called heretics. Ah, <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as a Hera stylist. Uh, okay, so... Shouldn't be in charge of naming things. Uh, Alright, so let's do, do do Lumber camp, yep. Same old, same old, just starts chopping. It's after this one that we do third house. So like th this happens right after that. Okay. All right. All right. So if I if I'm speeding this thing up, I, I mean, ten on wood is just lots on wood, huh? Okay. So it's, it's it's still like four-ish on wood. We never stop building, never surrender. So after the mill is gonna come one more house. There's the boar. Oh, is it the second boar? Oh shit, boar technology. So there there's there's seven collecting here. I thought that it was like six was the max. Am I crazy? Oh my god, that last hit is so disgusting. That's so disgusting that you, like, garrison into the town center, shoot out, and then un-garrison at the last second, just get the last hit going. Man, I'm gonna kill so many boars, this is gonna be horrible. Oh my god. Six for sheep, ten to eleven for boars? Okay. Everybody now. So what I should expect is that at 20... 22, it's loom into... Hello, Despy. It's gonna be loom into... the dirt cage. Yeah. There it is. 
лом. And then so, when we're teching up, we get this stuff. And then this is where, okay. <sighs> Goodness. This wall building stuff is befuddling to me. Okay, so... So, like, after you get all this food and you're teching up, it looks like the thing that happens... Is there's just, like... Oh, yeah, there, there's some things that need to happen in between here, which is, like, clearing out all this stone stuff. Hello, I'm a scout. Oh, look at some malicious. Get out. Get on out of here. There's a bunch of information I won't be able to process, so I'm not good enough. this explosion of farms happen? Because for some reason I thought that you needed uh, feudal age to make farms at all. There's that, there's that like two or three on this stuff again. Okay, so we, ju we just leveled up. So what I would expect is the mill upgrades the horse collar. This upgrades the chop collar. Nothing yet. Probably microing happening. I'm looking right up here for the ups. Archery range. I like archers. Yeah, I mean, I'm still probably going to do the exact same shit every single time and just like... Has horse collar already been researched? Yeah, these numbers seem really consistent. Like, three on this. Uh-oh. It's my cat. Hi, sweetheart. Alright. It's a giant cat! Look out! Uh, come on! No, oh, Dad, come on! Get off! See, I try to be, I try to be gentle with the cat, because she's a really good cat. But, you know, sometimes we do have to push the cat. Why is your cat bigger than me? Uh, it's because she eats her vegetables. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Yeah. This is this is such a good cat. Mm. Alright. We, we, we have to move the cat. Do not chew on the headphones. Let, let go. Alright. Alright. Gonna... We're going to be in a game and I'm going to be like, Dad's being at the fuck off! I'm just like, meow! I'm freaking out. So, no, 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 no. Okay, so I don't understand exactly why. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. All right, she's she's stretching out. She's literally laying across my arms right now. So, can someone help me understand why there was no research here and here? And I know it's because it's obviously not a hard and fast rule. Um, Oh, oh, Nilly says Burmese get the wood upgrade for free. But yeah, otherwise he would get it early feudal age. Great. Okay. And, what, and what about the horse collar, too? And I assume that it's something like... This, to me, looks like it is aggressive, right? Because we got uh, archers and the upgrade. Yeah, so probably, I suppose it's like this wood looks vulnerable. Or maybe this wood looks vulnerable. Maybe just the shape. Here, look, if you want, if you want to... Here, come here. This! Hey, come here. Come here. Come here, look. Yeah, there's the coffee. It's on the ground. We're having some... We're having a very emotional moment here. I know, it's horrible. Stick your head in the mug. Okay. She she just wants to stick her head in there. She just like likes she just likes coffee. She just likes coffee, you know. Oh, meow. All right, so. Oh oh she oh she coming back she coming back. 
Oh, 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 I see. So this is this is like a way of holding this attack off. Well, also, oh. Look, when I'm done with this game, I gotta move you. Because we're gonna be playing 1v1s, okay? Just really happy that I that I'm here. She's really happy. Mm. She's purring like crazy. It's so good. Let Despy stay, Sean. Yeah, but the thing is that like my keyboard is here. So that like that's what I would need. Alright. Okay. So this is just like archery and blacksmith. Cat hairs everywhere. I think I'm gonna crush some people, man. But again, I'm seeing... Still, I, I mean, even if the order is a little different, it's still just like an explosion of farms, and just like somewhere between three and six on this. Three if I was... Probably three if I was building no gold units. Probably six if I was building some gold units. Oh, look at you. I see, so this is archers for la defense. And straight up to Castle Age. Okay. Is this a skirmisher getting built? Or is that another archer? Nah, it's a skirmisher. Great. So here's zoom in. One, two. So this is probably the zoom level I'm going to play on. May the law. Padded archer armor. Okay. There is horse collar. Okay. Yep. <laughs> hey, look at the mouse. Hey. Hi. Believe it or not, I'm still here. Wouldn't you know it? It's, why are you surprised? Hey, Disney. Hey, look, look, look at this mouse cursor. There you go. No, not uh, like. Okay, I will pet you. All right. We got some serious purring going on. I was hoping I could get her eyes on there. Yeah, hi. Hi, darling. Okay, so yeah, it's... As as one is heading to Castle Age, it looks like I can be... Maybe frivolous is the wrong word, but it looks like I can be pretty frivolous. I, I can just build houses kind of willy-nilly. She's so pretty. Thank you, table man. Yeah, hi. Yeah. She also, she knows her name and she meows when you say her name. Watch this, it's great. Dispy! Look, I just, I'm, you're setting me up for failure here. Dispy! There you go, what a good girl. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, look at your beautiful scarf. This is so great. Let's do one more time. Watch this, we're gonna, we're gonna scritch, we're gonna get the little cat butt. There we go, that's good. Dispy! <laughs> All right, let's, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she never bites or scratches. She's just... Oh! Oh, oh, oh God! Oh! <laughs> this cat is obsessed with drama! Oh, this is, this is incredible. Yeah, so it's like, the, it, it appears like the tech to castle age. I'm, I'm seeing some patterns here, right? Which is, there's this number of nerds on the gold. It's like three to six. Six if I want to build more archers. Um, six if I want to build more archers. Three if I'm just looking to kind of like get up to castle age. But it looks like this, this period in feudal is really about sort of gobbling up more space. Okay. Oh, this is another archery range. There's two archery ranges here. So I assume the second archery range is a result of feeling under some pressure. Voice lines are the lifeblood of RTS games. So this is another... This is another blacksmith upgrade to give better arrowage. 
and it looks like we're making crossbowmen in both of these. And then there's some like high intensity walling shit in, but that's not that's not for us. Alright, so so here here's let, let's go back to the plan, right? Horse collar, faster choppers. Um and, and I like this this 16, 10, 3, 6 sort of thing. Um I'm gonna just say archery plus blacksmith or defense early. Uh, and I think I'm gonna say just change this to like secure extra money town centers and then I think I'll do something more like uh, gazoles and so and some of these things will like overlap a little bit um, I just need to get and then I'm just gonna say start of each age is wood and farming ups I want to get those right away. Farming ups. Core unit ups. Because, I mean, I don't see a reason not to just get the shit that I want to get. It doesn't look like... Like, in this situation, do I need a castle for defense? No. Looks like we have a pretty good wall here. Do I need castles for a unit? I have no idea. I don't know what the units in this game are. So this... I mean, this seems very reasonable. Right, and then here, there it is. Ooh, wheelbarrow. Shema. Shema. And I mean, the way that Hera is playing, just in terms of being more defensive and less aggressive, is very much so my style. I, I, I hate attacking. I don't want to start people out. Castfire says, is this notepad method something that you use to get good at StarCraft? Well, I mean, I'm sort of writing it out because this is a broadcast and I'm here to share a stream that is visual. Um, but, like, th th this is how, this is the inside of my brain um, when I'm playing any strategy game. And then, of course, this obviously expands and gets very long and has branches and forks and all this shit. What is ballistics? Oh, I see. So universities are stupidly obtuse to me. I, I don't understand why you would ever want one. <laughs> he said as an American citizen. I, I... But I, I can understand. Oh, I built an archery range for defense. Oh, I'm building more archers because I'm still getting pressured. So you know what? I'm going to get ballistics to make sure... Um, that my existing investment into archers can, can, can continue to get upgraded. And I'm also seeing a weakness in my previous evaluations of AoE, which were just general undervaluing of upgrades. So, we're starting to see a shitload of wood choppers, and I assume a shitload of wood choppers because... Da -na -na -na. Man, that messes with me that, that it's number of this kind of resource. Because I think I think StarCraft is actually the opposite. Hey, what do you think? This be Oh, you're so pathetic. Oh my god, have you ever heard a meow more pathetic than that? Oh, what a little sweetheart. Okay. So there's there there's some reason for more wood. It could just be something as simple as more town centers. So this is kind of interesting because th there's not a lot of movement between resource types in StarCraft. You know, if you put three on gas, you really leave three on gas. The one exception is sometimes when you put units on gas, get a gas upgrade and pull them off. And then eventually just go back to three on gas. Um, this game seems to have a lot of transitional type things where you have a bunch of things on wood and then you get all all this shit on wood and then you go a bunch on gold. And, it's, and, and uh, there's obviously points where you get some more evenness, but okay. I, I mean, I, I'm really surprised to see the degree to which players swing between different resources. Hey. 
so th this so far, you see this town center to get more resources? This is a town center to get another goal, or another um, wood patch. We have another town center here. All right, this is good. Secure extra money with town, town centers. Great. And then we also anticipate that we will... Dino now. Kimmick says, yo, watch for like 13 years, first time subbing on Twitch, so... Well, hey, welcome to our little neck of the woods, Kimmick. So, both these players have upgraded a lot. I mean, Slam has even gotten an additional armor upgrade. It's Archer on Archer action. Four town centers, what a baller. So this is this is kind of interesting to me to just say, wait, how many lumber camps are there? Here's one, and then here's a second, and there hasn't really been that many others. I mean, this is this is kind of incredible to me. I was building way too many of these, huh? I was building way too many of these. And it's funny, this is this is kind of the functional thing, right? Right, like, like, literally, town centers or lumber mills can be the deposit point for lumber camps. Like, literally and functionally, I know that. But, like, strategically and build order wisely, what do you do? Look at 40, 43 farms? Holy shit, man. And handcart? I mean, this is, this is astounding to me to see the degree to which Hera is just building not units, you know? So, I mean, I'll put 30 farms. Uh, is Castle Age even, or Imperial Age even been started? Wow, so many farms. Still looks like, it looks like this number that I'm using in my head is maybe wrong. It looks like, uh, we might say scorpions. Okay, so here, here's what I'm intuiting. This could be wrong. Um, Scorpion seemed like a really weird unit. My brain was like, well, why not just build mangonels? Mangonels seem like really tight. And it feels okay. like, well, if you're getting swarms of slow-moving units, it seems like the Ballista is... Especially these in combination, because they deal damage in different shapes. Shit. Okay, so... Now, now here, here's a really basic question. Well, I mean, so we see the Imperial Age uh, getting researched. We see a castle getting built here. So a castle can only be outranged by a trebuchet, I think. It can only be outranged by a trebuchet. I think, right now. So if I wanted to try to apply pressure on this right now, I'd have to build turtles. I don't remember what the name of the unit is, but they're turtles. They're very slow and they have a little turtle sticking out of the shell. Battering rams, there it is, turtles. So here is a stable going down. Archers were very good defensively for us. Castle is being built at the back. This castle is being built so it's in a secure location. Because if it's in a secure location, we can build trebuchets and then resist this. But this town center is kind of going to be defense line number one. Okay, this, this is where this is where my brain melts a little bit. In Age of Empires 2, your economy goes so much more out of control than in StarCraft. Like in StarCraft, you stop at like 70 workers um, in, in traditional play. Although a lot of pros are doing like 90 to 100 um, in some matchups. But I mean, either way, it's just like... You kind of stop then. In this game, I mean, like, it's hilarious to me that there's 119 workers. And there's 123 used supplies, so there's four non-workers. Like, you never see this sort of shit. Because the instant you get more money, you leverage that into letting you get more money, which you leverage into getting more money. Um, um, 
And of course, the reason this works is town centers defend themselves. Uh, Millie says, well, in AoE 2, every unit is only one supply. Yeah, yeah, th th that's a factor to it. But even so, I mean, the ratios are ridiculous. The ratios are ridiculous. I mean, 119 workers means that there's four military. Four. Four. Four military. But I mean, I understand the reasoning, which is, again, three rocks beat paper. So if I can get ahead economically, <laughs> this is the perfect cat cam. If I can get ahead economically, I can just outbuild you no matter what. And so would I rather invest in like one extra unit? Or I'd rather invest in something that increases the production of all of my workers. Let me get that one. Actually, how, how do I switch the perspective? So if I come over here, yeah, look at this. <laughs> it's like 25. It's like so extreme. Oh my god. But either way, either way, either way, either way. I understand the reasonings. Because why, why do that one? I could just get a little bit more money and still be safe and still be safe and still be safe and still be safe. But at some point, you need to start building units. What does that look like? When, when is the... When does that moment happen? And it looks like there's three stables, four stables, five stables. What are these doing here? Oh, how did they get there? How did these even arrive here? That's a hilarious castle placement. Okay. Bloodlines. Mangonel versus Mangonel. Who wins? Oh, looks like the Mangonel does. Wow. This is... This is really dumb. This is really dumb. This is like watching a... Like a unicycle jousting match. Super low mobility. Unbelievably clumsy. Incredibly high impact. Knight... Knight, 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 knight. Yeah, fast units. Okay, cool. I can make sense of this. And then I assume that plate barding armor. So this is this is a plate made out of bards. If you're a good storyteller, they mash you up with pumice stones and they just spread you all across a horse and it makes them very, very strong. I'm no historian, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So if I actually take a brief break and uh, note the economy, because again, I'm really just trying to get a sense of the economy. Where Where's our horse? Archery range. Oh, there's the stable. It's literally right there. Knights. Powerful all-purpose cavalry. So this is food and 75 gold. It's quite a lot of gold. Now, if I look here, eight, the number is still eight. Would you look at that? Maybe we're a little low on dudes on wood. Maybe we might want 12 or some shit. Oh, I see. There's a mining camp here that's being denied by... Excellent slam. Ah, oh, research and cavalry. Nice. <laughs> These poor farmers. Oh, that's so rad. 200 damage. Okay, so, so if I'm, okay, so, so I don't know how to evaluate who's ahead or who's behind, but I feel like in terms of, what's this, trebuchet pact? I mean, Bill and trebuchet, great. So my, my presumption is that um, if you're slam, you want to leverage the fact that you have a forward castle to like snatch up all this other resource stuff elsewhere. Oh, look, there's a castle over here too. It's like a little, a little mill. I have trouble understanding why this is here. Like, th this makes sense. Oh, look at this. There's stone walls. For some reason, as I've watched Age of Empires, whenever I see walls, I assume that they're always wooden walls. So, I mean, I can understand why these outposts are here to provide vision, but why, why on earth 
would you build a mill this far forward? Why not build the mill right here? I mean, that that that's something that I... If anyone can give me any clarity to, as to why the exposed farms. Mill to get deer? Oh, okay. There you go. Iron casting. I don't remember what this is for. That's okay. Husser, 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 husser. They're not hussers. Question. Hussers are the evolution of the scout cavalry. Yeah, no, that's the husser, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, big yawns. Oh, we're scritching. It's just a later melee attack. That's right. That's right. Hey, what do you think? Okay. It's okay. We're going to play the game soon. We're going to play the game soon. We want to get a good job on our understanding and our planning. Despy really is a, just a big, beautiful cat. She's, she's also very tiny. She's like seven pounds. Oh, we got some tongue. Hey, what do you think of this? Oh, it's going up. It's going down. It's going up. It's going this way. Whoa! 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 Hey, look at this. Oh shit, don't attack the monitor. <laughs> dad, no, dad! Alright. Um, this is 75 and 7. Uh, deals a lot versus monks, and it's quite fast. I mean,. Yeah, I mean, th this looks like an insanely pricey upgrade. Actually, just, just Scout Cavalry to Light Cavalry seems like an incredible... I mean, because I, I sometimes see these types of raids where someone brings a bunch of horsemen. But... Would players... I feel like it would be better to do raids with the Hussars, but maybe that's just... Seems awesome. And these... Oh, these are light cavalry, I see. So they're, they're running up here to pick off. Oh, cool. Alright, so this is the second TC that goes down. These are heavy camel riders to repel these. Whoa, dude! Holy shit, they shred! Oh, this is so good. So it's sort of like archers were the stepping stone, and they've been upgraded so much. Um, but it's really like trebuchet archers is sort of like the main force, and then it's just a bunch of heavy camel riders helping them shut down. Cavalry parades. Okay, I kind of see this. So here's Pikeman getting research. Chainmail armor. Halberdier. Okay. This looks very like very bad news for our hero. Doesn't change the fact that I felt like this was incredibly educational for me as a person. Oh, of course. And I mean. Just because these are built to be anti-cavalry doesn't mean that they can't just completely dunk on uh, infantry. Oh my god. Can you... There's like three desks in here. Yeah, look, go up there. There's a box. Oh god. So this is where Hera is... Okay, these are hussars. Okay. So the light cavalry got upgraded. The knights are coming back. I guess calves. So that brrrr is what I'm hearing out of the castle. So the Hustlers really are just trying to pick off infantry, right? So there's 121 workers, and if I go on over to Slam, 130, man. Slam is owning. Okay. I'm gonna speed this up because I think I think I have a 
loose plan. And so if I'm, if I'm quite late, I can do this sort of thing where I just smash down barracks to just make a bunch of pikemen. And our, our 50 and our 30 number have been really valuable. Again, I've only really been seeing like 11 or 12 on gold. Man, my numbers were off. Now, I wonder if we'll remember any of the hockeys. So my understanding of this fight is just a lot of raiding, poking, picking around. Uh, and it looks like the core of this army, these are halberders. So I mean, like, there's a lot of armies in RTS games that are like, there's the strong core, and then there's the fast things that move away from it. So like, obviously we're talking about this with, okay, castles are like the ultimate anchor unit. And then there's a bunch of, like, you know, heavy camera riders and things that are able to sort of pivot around and do that. And it's like, okay, so... Yeah, the halberdiers are this core that makes this very strong, but you'll still want either something ranged or something fast to sort of pivot around this. Holy crap! Oh my god, these things slap! And... Wait, 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 wait. Despy, hold on. Despy, hold on. So if we go to... Husser, D does this have bonus? What's the thing that has bonus versus siege units? I mean, these seem just like really good against siege units, anyways. Dad, no! I live a life of comfort and love, and we play string all the time, and I get tasty food and tuna treats, and I don't want to be here though. Oh God! Oh fuck, Dad! Yeah, I know, I'm terrible. No. Excuse me? Did you just hiss at me? Oh, her tail's flicking. She's giving me the stare down. What are you doing? Huh? Alright. So, I mean, it, it, it's kind of funny where... In in one in one sense, wow! She lashes her tail in contempt. In one regard, it seems like there's this complex network of this counters this counters this counters this. Um, but functionally, it looks like the transitions and the compositional selections occur in much chunkier, dramatic, big fashion. Like there's a lot of cavalry units being produced. Hussars, literal cavalry, and there's just this giant wad of pikemen mushing out. And that's about it. It's not like these compositions that have like three of these and ten of these and four of these and one of these and eight of that, you know, it's like... It's a, it's a very sort of muscular, I'm gonna make a lot of this in a short period of time and catch you off guard. I see him dragging these things away. And here's the hub bearers. I see, and then we've, we've poked a hole in this. Yeah, I mean... Camel's counter, but that's fine. We'll just over well. This game's getting a little loud. Turn this shit down. A Sacriel! What up, Sacriel? Are you learning to cast this? Uh, no, no, no. What we're doing is we're learning how to play this motherfucker. Because we're gonna go in and we're gonna play this game after this, and my little my little partner in crime, Desper, is gonna help us out. Oh, look at this, brilliant! So this is where space comes in. Okay, wait. I, I, I'm also seeing seventy farms. Is that right? Do you actually want to get seventy fucking farms? That's insane. Uh oh. And holy crap! I think this is the only gold on the map. There's some gold. Oh. 
there's no gold left in farm scroll. I see, I see. So if I'm running low on gold, like for instance, if I have zero of these things, I would get, I would get some. Oh my god, it makes total sense. Okay, so then let's let's go investigate a castle here. So we got a castle. Where's our trebuchet? Two hundred gold. Okay. So if I'm in a very very late game situation, then what I want to do is probably really just spend on trebuchets to break positions if need be, and then go for go for the fags. So hussars are hussars faster than than cavalry? Well, I guess light cavalry are light cavalry upgraded to hussars. I guess. This is an upgrade going down. This is blast furnace. I mean, this looks like a shooty item. This game is incredible. Plus two attacks you can from cavalry. Oh, thank you, thank you, boss. Final melee attack. Got it. Yeah. So there it is. This is the anchor point. Bunch of help bearers. Smashes through cavalry. Our other little guys just try to zone. Insult to injury. Elite Chukuno or Chukonu? It's a battle for the goals. I'm gonna see something. Because right now, 125 here to how many? 108. Wow. Is Hera actually maybe gonna win it? Oh my god. Well, yeah, the archers moved just a little bit too far forward to where they were out of protection. My god, this, this game, like, Age of Empires 2 is just out of control. Is a game. It's unrepentantly ridiculous. I feel like I'm watching anime. This doesn't, like, what is going on? Oh yeah, we stabbed that castle till it fell. We actually stabbed it with our spears till it caught fire. Dude, 96 farms? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Holy shit, Hera's a gamer. Dude. Okay. Alright, so... Let's look at our plan. Yeah, no, excuse me, Despy. I got an alt tab here. Um, I, I want to type things right now, but I can't because my cat is on the keyboard. You know, let's 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 do the bait and switch. Um, come here. I need to have access to this. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on, Des. Come on. Are you mad at me? Here, look, here, look, it's dad. Look at that. There you go. You're a good cat. Yeah. I know, I know. I need you to move, though. Come on. It's okay, it's dad. Look, look, it's just me. There you go. Yeah, it's okay. All right, let's 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 uh, ask Despy for permission to use her desk. All right, here we go. Come on. Whoa! It's both ends of the string. Whoa! Whoa! 
Are you going to fall for it? you going to fall for it? Huh? Wow, she does not want to play at all. Come on. Come on, come here. It's on the ground. You can't resist. You can't resist. Oh, her little head's going crazy. Come on. Come on. Careful. Come here. And we're done. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the late game. Let's talk about the late game. Okay, okay. All right. I got so much hair on my face. So much hair on my desk. Okay, so Imperial, I feel like it's uh, focus on upgrades for a set of core units. Uh, ensure upgrades for the final trash unit, like Husser or something like this. Explosive production counts. Um, we can get like a bunch of farms, but eventually we're just gonna say, uh, oh yeah, and, and I, didn't, I never saw more than 10 on gold, right? Isn't this, isn't this about right? Isn't this about right? And question about production. I feel like uh, in, in Castle Age, I'm looking for something like uh, some add of production structures. Like, not, not a shitload, but really this is an economy phase. What's a good count for Imperial? Is it like 100 supply or something like this? And again, this is just very vague understandings of things. This is me just trying to... Okay, so I mean, let's 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 try to tie together what has been implanted into our brain. Okay, let's review the day. We started off and we just spent a while just looking at the units, looking at the upgrades in a one v zero. Um, not hundred farmers. Well, that's that's what happened in the last game, right? Well, yeah, may as well just put ninety. Um. What we did at the start of the day is we took a look in a 1v0, we just were by ourselves, we just made units, made mangonels, made some um, ballistae, and we just kind of hung out with it and just looked at what they did. Um, this let us get a good sense of some of the interactions that I had heard, because I, I mean, I hear things like spearmen counter horses. But I don't have a feel for it, because I, I can't look at the units, I can't look at the health, things like this. And after that, we got a good sense of what's going on, uh, just in terms of the what of units. Then what we did is we started to construct this simple plan, and uh, constructing our simple plan kind of works as follows, where we are looking, we're looking for convergence points in time, right? Here's our possibilities. Here's time as it goes on. Let me actually switch this to white. We, we have a couple things, like if this is feudal age and this is castle age. Let me actually put the labels above. If this is feudal age and this is castle age and this is imperial age. If we have these, we have these kind of convergence points that we're trying to work for. And he, like this, this kind of convergence point is something like, hey, when you're in feudal age, try to go for like 16 farms, 10 wood, 3 gold, 6 stone. Okay, like, it, it's just, it's just, oh crap, what am I trying to go for? Just go for this stuff. So it doesn't matter if I get lost because I got rushed or because I just had a, an amazingly clean opening or maybe I uh, messed up the opening. We'll, we'll kind of get back to these convergence points here. So I want to come up with the, this convergence point plan here and then I kind of have like another one here and another one here, right? So I'm, we're, we're hoping that this will give us a start to finish plan. Not a start to finish plan and the notion of here is how to win the game. No. I want a plan that is within the ballpark of reasonable. Because if it's within the ballpark of reasonable, it's something that we can use to help us learn and something we can adjust with. I want a complete plan. Complete in that here is the end of the game. I always know how to get to here. At any point in time, I can go, wait, oh shit, what am I trying to be doing? Okay, I'm trying to get to this point. Or from down here, oh, I'm trying to get to this point. This complete plan, start to finish, is a guide. It's not, it's not that it's correct. 
It's that it's a guide. It's that it lets us know where we're trying to go to at any point in time. And so in this way, um, we can start playing games, and as we get losses under our belt, this plan we can adjust, we can tune, we can learn, we can play with. I'm probably going to go for, like, archers and blacksmiths right now. Maybe in a week I'll go, you know what, I want to go for stables with cavalry. And maybe when I try to do that, I discover that this doesn't work. And that's great. We want to have a plan, so when we try stuff, we see how our plan gets disrupted, and then we can update our plan to be more rich, more detailed, better. Um, so let's. So 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 this was really our plan. Is the Dark Age? We tried to remember a build order to get to feudal. Feudal age. We're kind of going for about this many workers, and behind this, make sure we get our upgrades. Just get some of these early structures and shit. And then mid game in the cast, we want to make sure that we're taking extra locations, we're building castles that we like, we're ramping up farms. Ramp up farms to a bunch of farms. That's a great sentence, we're going to leave that. Uh, we want to increase some of our production, but mainly we want to make sure we're, we're getting lots of good upgrades. Get them up. So get upgrades, play a little defensively, until we can get to Imperial and focus on upgrading and focusing on some kind of core unit. I'm almost certainly going to just do cavalry shit, because I like things that are fast. Thick, solid, and tight. Thanks for the inspiration. And this is where we really want to build a bunch of shit. And, and so this feels really good. This feels really, really good to me. Ooh. Again, not as a success case, but as a guide to help us learn to win. So we're going to go to ranked. Uh, when we come back, how many bands do I get? Is this right? Are these the available maps? Because let me tell you something, if there's one thing I don't want to play on, it's water. Looks right? Okay. Well, when we come back, we are going to immediately go into ranked. You should prefer Arabia? That's a great thought. Let's go ahead and prefer Arabia. I really need to use a restroom. And I, when I come back, in about five minutes, we're going to go straight into ranked. Uh, Whoa, that scared me when this came up, because normally I only have the game on this monitor, and I tabbed, and I was like, ah! <laughs> did I dox myself? I did not. Okay, where, where, where's our overlay control? All right, we're going to take a five-minute break, and we come back multiplayer AoE 2. Looking forward to eat.